Hi there, I'm Christine Zips with Zips Media and Wired Schools. And today I'm very excited to share with you our special guest, Associate Professor Ole Johansson. And we're gonna be talking today about an upcoming research project he has in the works. And it's gonna be a huge, it's just gonna be wonderful. But before I bring him in to join us, I would like to share with you a little secret that his birthday is next month and he has all of these research projects. He's so eager to get started. But like with so many things, what is lacking are research dollars to get him going, to help provide what he needs to do this very, very special research. And this one is going to be about saving the bees so we can have food and our children will thrive. It's a very important topic as we're going to be discussing. But I wanted to let you know a little secret that over the years, I've had the opportunity to form a bit of a special friendship with Oli, along with some other mutual friends. And we got together and, and we were wondering what could we give this man who literally does have everything, but he has everything to give the world in his research. And we thought that since he needs research dollars, let's launch a very special funding campaign to come out in honor of his birthday. We will give him this special gift for his birthday. And he's a very humble man. He doesn't like to ask for money. And so we thought this would be so special. So we are, we're doing our best to keep a secret from our dear friend, Oli. So, but I wanted to let you know ahead of time before we bring him in to join us. So just, don't tell him, and that'll be our little secret. Okay, cool. All right. So for those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting him or learning about Oli and his great uh, body of work, I'd like to share a short introduction. We'll have the link to his full bio below in the contents. So if I may read here to make sure I get on track, we have Associate Professor Oli Johansson. He's now retired since 2017, but still active from the prestigious Karolinska Karolinska Institute, Department of Neuroscience, and head of the Experimental Dermatology Unit. He has a long background in the neurosciences and has co-authored 143 original papers, reviews, book chapters, and conference abstracts, a publication record hard to beat. Oli has participated in more than 300 congresses, symposia, and meetings as an invited speaker, and with free contributions as an invited observer at an additional 200. His studies have been widely recognized in the public media, including newspapers, radio, and TV. He's a world-leading authority in the field of EMF radiation and health effects. Among many achievements, he coined the term screen dermatitis, which was developed into the functional impairment electro hypersensitivity, and which was mainly due to his work. So with that, we're going to um, ask Oli to join us. Okay, so now <laughs> after we've had that, uh, that first start, uh, we'd like to bring Oli in to join us. And so okay. he's, he's been patiently waiting in the, in the waiting room. So thank you so much, Oli, welcome. Thank you so much. I was just reading some papers I have here. Oh so, my goodness, for you. I can only imagine how much reading you do. <laughs> so, and we appreciate it so much, but I thought maybe we could get started today uh, when we get into our uh, recorded conversation of having you, asking you to share with us uh, what got you started into this field of work. And uh, that's a very interesting and important question. You know, I'm an academic scientist and as such, I'm always observing the world, the real life around me. And uh, years ago, uh, I was at the petrol station here in Sweden and pumping gas. And uh, then I looked around and I felt something was missing. Um, and then I realized that the old fashioned buckets with water and a sponge in them, which people used to clean the windshields, they were gone. So I thought, well, they have them some other place. Uh, and since I'm a biker riding a Harley Davidson motorcycle, um, I didn't need it, but I was interested. So I went indoors and asked the staff and they said, 
you know, people never ask about those any longer. So we have, we have stopped having it. Uh, what I said, uh, but uh, I remember when I was a kid, the cars were just covered with insects, but they are no longer, they said. Uh, well, I could understand. I said they are more aerodynamically shaped and maybe they sweep the insects aside. But I'm riding a motorcycle. I'm not aerodynamic in any way, you know. <laughs> and you're right, I said. There are no insects. I never clean the motorcycle windscreen or anything. Uh, this is very odd. And then I started to think deeper and went to the scientific and general literature and realized that there has been a tremendous reduction in insects around the planet and especially in focus of the pollinators. Uh, among them, maybe the most important or at least most well-known, the honeybees. Because I have one of these integral helmets uh, with uh, your lower uh, screen for your eyes. And I thought I should clean it. And I looked at it and it was super clean. And I realized, yeah, it's just ongoing. It's getting worse and worse, fewer and fewer insects. And as I said, I went to the literature and I read, for instance, about Germany. I think the report was from 2018 that more than 75% of the pollinators and other insects are completely gone. And the odd thing is that science don't know why. And then I already knew that scientists around the world, colleagues to myself, they had done studies using cell phones and putting them close to beehives and seeing that the queens and the worker bees would leave and disappear. And I had also formed a bond together with a colleague in Switzerland. And we had even now um, presented one study regarding uh, stressful behavior when uh, honeybees are subjected to various forms of uh, radiation from the modern society. Uh, and um, as you know, that kind of enormous reductions of pollinators have entered public media. Here in Sweden right now, you can see a number of different BBC documentaries, American documentaries, German documentaries and so on. Uh, and they're all about the enormous reduction of pollinators, especially bees around the world and the impact on the food uh, processing industry and its uh, catastrophe around the corner and the politicians and civil servants and farmers and so on, they are really pulling their hair and in enormous stress, what should be done? And uh, people are trying to understand. And of course, our contribution could shine light on one of the factors, namely effects of radiation and there are other factors, viruses, the new type of farming landscape, etc. And maybe they all blend together in a rather negative soup. And on the internet, you can find very interesting, but also very scary uh, illustrations where people have been allowed uh, to go into a big food store, photograph all the vegetables, the fruits, the beets, and so on. And then they have removed all the things, all the food items that are based upon pollinators. And practically the whole store is just empty. The shelves are empty. So if we don't do anything rapidly, we could face a hunger catastrophe, which would make the Hunger Games on cinema <laughs> looking like nothing really. And I'm particularly concerned about children, uh, your viewers cannot see, but you know, I have eaten. Uh, so I need to be on a diet actually, you know? And uh, so I'm, I'm not in focus here, but the children uh, and the grandchildren and the unborn coming generations. Uh, and if we have killed off all the pollinators and all the um, other types of insects, we shouldn't forget about the other types of insects. And also in the next sort of generation, all the birds that are dependent on the insects for feeding. Uh, and uh, it's all a web that goes together and in the middle of it are our own children, grandchildren and coming generations. 
and we would love to try to uh, do some um, both replications of previous results but also some new studies regarding the impact of artificial electromagnetic fields like from cell phones wireless internet and similar installations but i yeah. wanted to say that you know over the years only you've contributed so much in this field and i was wondering what you're planning now what where are you going from here well regarding the honeybees we would love to actually be able to go to switzerland uh, together with our colleague there um, daniel favria and to stay with him for quite some time actually uh, to learn from him at site all the necessary details we have already here in sweden done some simpler pilot experiments where we have tested equipment and uh, time durations exposure parameters and so on and uh, we realized that we were amateurs really so we need to meet uh, someone that is more of a master in this area and daniel favria definitely is one of them and also on site to do different experiments uh, to using various sound signals like piping signals from the honeybees in their beehives when they are subjective to different forms of stress and also using uh, what we would call then an inborn control uh, where you can subject them to well-known stress and then compare it to the kind of stressor that the radiation from a cell phone system uh, would be. Uh, so there is um, quite a number of different uh, sub projects in the bigger scheme and plan and uh, uh, don't uh, forget also that we have other investigations regarding for instance the human immune system uh, learning and uh, memory capacity issues in children uh, we want to look at uh, electro hypersensitivity the uh, disability that is uh, acknowledged here in sweden and in a few other places uh, and so on i mean there's so much to do and um i'm 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 retired actually uh, so um, uh, but i continue to work more or less day and night i could tell you and um, the stressor that hits me is of course uh, that we would need much more resources to be able to pursue all these different projects and we are constantly trying to um, get that. We have just recently sent a rather big application uh, to a governmental funding organization here in Sweden, but we uh, now hear from, um, what should we say, spies inside that organization that they want to support projects that use wireless systems in beehives. Mm -hmm. So we would probably not get any money to study the negative impacts of such systems and but so, but but with your raising your raising awareness though it, do you think it's possible that those who want to go that direction may not have a clear understanding of the severe ramifications of continuing this course i hope mm -hmm. they have an understanding uh, but if they do and put children for instance at jeopardy that sounds um, a little bit corrupt in my ears you know and maybe they're not just aware we have tried to inform and educate people and some are listening for sure right. but most people they sort of no 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 i don't want to hear you know i don't want to hear there absolutely that's been my observation yeah. as well yes things that are scary mm -hmm. and i just cannot cope with the one additional factor right uh, so but i mean i learned throughout the years that if you put sort of hardcore facts on the table even the most reluctant will start listening at the very end mm -hmm. and don't don't get me wrong of course i hope that myself donald favri in switzerland my co-worker robert ferrum here in sweden that we will be wrong, that there isn't any effect at the honeybee level. There isn't no effect on pollinators, insects, birds, and so on. But so far, we are not wrong. Doesn't, and, see, doesn't seem to be the case, right? No. All of yeah, the anecdotal, if anything. Yeah. Uh, right. So, um, 
and, and I see that um, the society is moving more and more in uh, coupled uh, systems like 5G, 6G, I heard about 7G and other such uh, internet of things based uh, communication systems. And they want to communicate with the inside of beehives, etc. And my medicines to that is that no, just let the bees be, if you excuse the pun, you know. Absolutely. Uh, um, because they will do the work for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know what they're doing inside uh, and uh, just let them be. But uh, all these commercial companies, they want to sell electronic and uh, wireless uh, uh, surveillance systems that will uh, more or less cook the bees and other insects in all the radiation. And um, we want to investigate it. Absolutely, and thank you for that. Um, and, and I've been reading about that and I wanted to ask you, is it, will you be studying wild bees as well as, I think they call them managed bees, like with yeah, the hives? Exactly. Um, we will do both, and especially the wild bees are very, very interesting because there you have a dramatic reduction. It's even worse than for the um, ordinary housebound bees. They're uh, so but, much smaller, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, that might have something to do with it. Yeah, they are very, very specialized. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and, and the odd thing is that their plants in the wild, they are still there but the bees are not. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, the plants seem to have survived elegantly well, but the bees have just disappeared. And like in Germany, the experts that were interviewed, uh, they have said, you know, we don't know where they have gone. They are just gone. Right. Uh, so that's uh, like a science fiction panorama, I would say. And we need to do something now, not tomorrow. When people having beehives have looked uh, they are empty. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people believe uh, from observational studies that it coincided with uh, the introduction of, for instance, new 5D antenna bases. Right. Uh, and that needs to be studied in a scientific mm -hmm. format. Absolutely. Uh, and and very, very important to mention yeah. that it's yeah. not just a next step from 2, 3, 4G. No. It's a whole different animal. And yeah. it, it, and as, as I'm sure you will do, but um, enough is not being understood or, you know, it's not as far known as it needs to be. So no. you're doing very, very important work, Oli, and you're going to be doing your research in Switzerland. It sounds like you're ready to go. Will you yeah. also be working elsewhere, like oh, yeah. maybe back home in a lab yeah. or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we do have a very good contact with a place where they have a number of beehives. We have been there already. It's around 360 kilometers southwest of Stockholm mm -hmm. uh, and we are welcome to come back and um, uh, we want to pursue as I say both replications of previous results but also completely new studies using new um, hypotheses and test them mm -hmm. uh, but uh, right now if I should be sort of Swedishly blunt we are basically sitting and rolling our thumbs because we cannot do very much. All of these studies do need resources of different types. And we are waiting for, well, a miracle, I would call it, you know, so. <laughs> and, you know, with that, how, and, and be as blunt as you need to be. I think we need to be very blunt. How may we, all of us who will be watching and listening to your words, how may we help you starting now? What can we do? Well, I mean, um, I hate to say this actually, it's very non-Swedish, but um, we do have um, a possibility to fund us through gifts and people can go to uh, our fundraiser call and help us that way. And believe me, every single whatever currency, dollar, pound, euro, yen, whatever, it makes a huge difference for us. Uh, and uh, if people get together and help us, that would be super, really. Absolutely. And if we all give. And remember, you know, it's not for us. 
Uh, it's for the bees, it's for the food production in the future, and it is for the children down the line. As I said before, uh, I weigh my uh, 90 kilograms, I don't need more food. <laughs> and uh, so it's not for me, but it is really for the future. And uh, I see so many signs. And as I started before, uh, as a scientist, you walk around in reality and you see all these signs and they are not easily explained, uh, but there are handles in the scientific literature to be followed and no one seems to be allowed to follow them. And in the meantime, uh, all the big players are leaving the ship, no insurance or reinsurance company takes any responsibility for this. The manufacturers of telecom technique doesn't, and the operators, they do not, and so on, you know. So people tell you it's safe, and at the same time, they also throw themselves overboard and swim towards uh, uh, land. Yes, their actions kind of kind of yeah. speak otherwise, yeah. you know. Very, um, very differently, you know. Yeah, it's like they something. knew something, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, so, um, and I have written, for instance, to the Swedish government and parliament and asked them about exactly what you say now. What do you actually know? And so far, I haven't received a single answer. Nothing. It, 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 and, and I know my question earlier, I, I've been called Pollyanna a few times in my life. I, I like to believe that everyone is basically good and they want nothing but good for everybody. But like you say, that, um, that your, your call out, your, your request for this money will, is so very important. And to, for every living being on the planet, I, I believe that we all eat for a living. I yeah. mean, it's kind of what we do. We eat for a living it, yeah. to, to live. And without food, we're not going to be around very long. And no. our children deserve some, that, that's what called me to be an advocate. I looked at our granddaughters and, you know, I said, one day they're going to be of age enough to look around, see the world, see the way things are, connect the dots and say, how do my parents, how do my grandparents, how did they allow us to have, how, how did they leave this to us? They're yeah. gone or they will yeah. be. And we've, you know, the future, they're our future. And yeah. what kind of a future are we setting up for them? Hi, I'm Savannah from the United States. I'm worried about the bees. Will you please help Oli save them? Please send him money for his research today. Thank you very, very much. Hi, I am Sasha. Help save us children by donating generously to Professor Oli's research. Without bees, we will have no future. Lots of love from South Africa. Hi, this is Haley from New England. I'm worried about the bees too. Won't you please send Ollie whatever you can to help him save our bees, food, and children? Thank you. Hi, I am JP. I'm 10 years old from South Africa. Without bees, we won't have food. So please help Ola save the bees. Thank you. Good day. Please help Ollie save the bees. No bees, no beautiful flowers. No yummy fruit and no delicious honey in my tummy. Have a super sweet day. Bye. We, I can't think of any more important work, Oli. Bless you for wanting to take this on and for all of your other comrades who are well, willing okay. to join you. It's no, huge. I love, I love really what you say now because uh, very often people talk about that when you die, you cannot bring anything with you. Right. Your beloved... Uh, um, house or boat or motorcycle you have to leave everything but actually you can take one thing with you namely a good reputation uh, and I don't want people as you say afterwards say why didn't he speak up why didn't he do something I read is have them say he tried his hardest he failed we are a very dire situation but he did his very best Absolutely. and I think more people like you, me, and others think the same, then we can really move and rock the world, you know. Oli, as you, I'm sure you can pick up, but he's a very humble man. He's also a very hardworking, and he's just, I, I've, I've never met a man who is, who is a greater gentleman, and he, his heart is there, and he's willing to do this work for us. 
he has worked so hard for so many years he's not ready to kick back and and rest on his laurels and go play and ride his harley all day he can't because he knows too much and he knows how things can be better and yep. the same with me i'm trying to I'm trying to raise awareness on so many global problems that are causing harm, especially to our children. And Oli is right there, you know, feeling the same way. So please, please um, let's do what we can. I'm, I am certainly going to be um, contributing as much as I can and keep them coming. Um, you know, I modest means, but, um, you know, I, it's just so heartwarming to know that we can play a part and no, no amount is too small. We no. just need, if we all join together and do that, we can manifest this for Oli. So please consider that. We're going to be contributing, um, showing a link below in the comments section where you can easily donate any amount and it, you know that it will go to a good cause. And I'd like to offer to Oli if he would like along the way when he gets started with this research. And I know that the funds are going to be there to be the wind beneath your wings that you can do this that i would love to check in with you from time to time and oh, you can yeah. give us a little update on how oh, is it going yeah. it's been yeah. three months it's been six months and yeah. this is what we're doing and that also i would like to throw back at your audience any observations uh, that you make like i did at the petrol station years ago please tell us because it's by such observations we pick up the catastrophe before it has started. So please do that. When I went for lunch, I sat down on a park bench at, we have a very small um, sort of center here with a few shops. And then I saw something that has become more common, namely what I would call in English, a forest pigeon. And the reason for that is the ordinary pigeons are gone. And the forest ones that generally do not enter the city, they are having a free room now. So mm -hmm. they are entering and taking over the spots where the pigeons used to be before. Right. And wow. the sparrows, as you say, wow, they are so few compared to when I was a kid, for instance. Right, they and used to be everywhere. All the rats of the sky. Mm -hmm. because there were millions and millions and millions and now you really react when you see one of them absolutely absolutely well Oli, i you know i just you know how i feel about you <laughs> and and i you know you're just thank you um thank, thank you. you yeah and thank you. To everyone listening please consider no amount too small Help us help Oli. Let's get him back to work. We don't want him loose on the streets. We need to keep him busy. And he's ready to do this great, great work. And he needs and deserves our help. So please join me. And um, any, any last words before we um, head out? I think it's uh, very important, as you say, that adults step up and take adult responsibility. It's not harder than that. And to be concerned, it's not an illness. It's really a healthy reaction, especially nowadays with so many question marks in our modern societies. Hello, Ola. Um, I'm here, this is Lorraine, wishing you a happy birthday and saying thank you to you for being such a wonderful colleague, mentor, friend, um, for always being there, whatever happens in the way that this field is developing and the way that we have to always think into things and how often it all goes wrong um, or we try to find our way through all the difficulties but you're always there for me and for everybody who I introduce or you know um, and I thank you for applying your science and your mind and your kindness to my life and to others lives and i really wish you happy birthday today so lots of love from lorraine bye there once was a man named ole whose science would help pave the way and the love he would show for all creatures would grow through the work and compassion each day 
Great EMF discoveries were made in his lab where he once was paid till industry came through, said this simply won't do and shut down his important brigade. Not one to be easily daunted, he continued to do as he wanted. He spoke out to schools, worked on government rules, all the while telecom taunted. We are so grateful, dear Ole, you were born. Your heart on your sleeve is well worn. We thank you so dearly for continuing yearly. Fond birthday wishes we adorn. You're our hero, Professor Johansson. Happiest birthday to you from Massachusetts. Hi, Oli. It's Josh here. I just heard it's your birthday and I wanted to say happy birthday. And also, um, thank you so much for everything that you've done, for everything you're doing, for planting so many good seeds of awareness and um, science and solutions, real science. Uh, for for everyone to uh, to reach toward the critical threshold. Um, so thank you. Be blessed. May it be a, a, a super prosperous and happy and joyous, healthy, um, and, and everything good this coming year. Cheers, Professor Johansson. How are you, sir? Uh, wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Many more to come too because we need you man we need you to keep doing what you're doing because it's awesome and uh the world needs it so thanks again and happy birthday sir perfectly said on that note thank you very much everyone for um attending and listening and considering this um this selfless plea from uh professor johansson goodbye for now oh.